NASA's impressive array of Earth-observing satellites are being used to both inform the science of invasion biology and support land management actions to reduce the negative impact of harmful infestations. This work involves agricultural pests in Africa, invasive fish in the Pacific Northwest, and increased fire caused by non-native grasses. The focus of this presentation will be on how NASA assets are being used to better understand the detection, impact, and spread of forest pests, starting with observations in the northeastern United States. Non-native forest pest can disrupt ecosystem function, increase fire risk, and cause significant economic harm. This presentation will highlight a range of sensors, techniques, and modeling applied to forest pests, starting with near-surface remote sensing from tower-based phenocams, passive remote sensing from operational satellites, new information from LIDAR, and modeling at the national scale. Phenology, or the timing of vegetation activity, is a powerful tool to observe invasive species. Phenological cameras, or phenocams, are mounted cameras that use digital repeat photography methods to stack images from, taken from every 15 minutes to once a day. Through stacking all of these images and drawing regions of interest, we can track the greenness of plants, and we can observe changes in that greenness due to invasive species. Here we see an example of how phenocams can observe invasive species events. In 2018, gypsy moths attacked a forest and caused a massive defoliation, which we can quantify through the greenness curve generated from Phenocam, compared to a normal curve in 2019. Forest pest impacts and forests susceptible to those pests can be mapped from multispectral and hyperspectral imagery, as seen in the next two examples from NASA developed teams. First, a team based at Goddard Space Flight Center in summer of 2019 describes their methods mapping eastern hemlock stands vulnerable to hemlock woolly adelgid. Then, a team based at Colorado State University in spring of 2016 describes their techniques for mapping the impacts of spruce beetle in Gunnison National Forest. Our team used data from NASA's Landsat 8 OLI Terra Aster and the European Space Agency Sentinel-2 MSI to model eastern hemlock across New York. Using this freely available satellite data can offer an accurate and cost-effective method for predicting eastern hemlock stands. Using Google Earth Engine, we applied field data from across New York State to train our distribution models, enabling them to predict hemlock presence in the state. The team employed a zero-inflated model that draws on spruce mortality reference data and a satellite imagery stack to create percent cover maps of spruce mortality. Step one involved a unique methodology where 2,000 30 meter square grids were overlaid on high resolution imagery. Each point in the grid was used to uniformly determine the presence or absence of spruce mortality. Topographic data and vegetation indices from Landsat 5 and 8 were downloaded from Earth Explorer and stacked into composite images. Spectral values were extracted from these images at each grid location. The zero-inflated model generated two outputs, a binary presence-absence map and a continuous map indicating percent mortality across the landscape. The hemlock woolly adelgid is an invasive insect that is spreading in the forests of the northeastern United States, driven by warmer winter temperatures associated with climate change. The hemlock woolly adelgid kills trees from the bottom up. Thinning of the lower and middle canopy then allows growth in the new understory that eventually replaces the hemlocks. Early detection of hemlock woolly adelgid is essential in preventing its spread. New LiDAR technologies can help monitor hemlock woolly adelgid infestations by penetrating the dense canopy. Ground-based and airborne LiDAR together can help build a complete picture as shown in this slide. This slide shows an image of a LiDAR point cloud of dying hemlock stems, live white pine, and a dense new understory, in this case constituted mostly by black birch. The color coding indicates height off of the ground. This animation shows a LiDAR point cloud created using multiple ground-based LiDAR scans stitched together and color coded by height above ground. 
The hemlock woolly adelgid damages trees from the ground up, leaving a brighter, more open understory. These LiDAR scans were taken at Harvard Forest, where long-term experiments are simulating post-hemlock forest dynamics. In this animation, the understory has been colored by height, while the hemlock and pines are displayed in white. Ground-based and airborne LiDAR can help us track the changing forest structure. Damage from various insect pests can be inferred from changes to the forest structure. Emerald ash borer is another invasive pest currently threatening the existence of ash trees throughout North America. This beetle kills trees by feeding underneath their bark, eventually preventing any nutrient or water transport. An experimental plot has been established at Harvard Forest, where the beetle is expected to arrive in the near future. LiDAR scans will track the progress of the infestation and help us better understand the structural impacts and detectability of this pest. Airborne and spaceborne LiDAR scanners can complement the ground-based measurements shown previously. The NASA G-Lite Airborne instrument allows the construction of 3D forest structure models over large areas, as shown in the background of this image. The inset map shows a hemlock woolly adelgid affected area, which includes a low-lying swamp as well as hemlock stands. Recent research in this area has integrated NASA G-Lite and NASA JEDI spaceborne LiDAR to demonstrate the canopy loss associated with hemlock woolly adelgid, as shown in the middle figure. The USA National Phenology Network offers pheno forecasts for over a dozen insect pests, including emerald ash borer, hemlock woolly adelgid, as shown in this animation, magnolia scale, pine needle scale, and winter moth. Pheno forecasts are based on published models that indicate management relevant stages in the insect's life cycles. These maps are updated daily and available six days into the future and at a fine spatial resolution on the USA National Phenology Network's website. Emerald ash borers spend most of their life cycle under the bark of ash trees. However, as adults, they emerge and spread to new trees. The USA National Phenology Network's Emerald Ash Borer Forecast Map shows whether locations are approaching, in, or past the window when adult beetles are expecting to be flying and can potentially be controlled. As the year progresses, you can see locations shift from blue and green tones, which indicate the location is not yet experiencing conditions associated with adult emergence, into yellow, which is when the adults are, have emerged and are flying. Eventually, locations progress to tan and brown, indicating the window for controlling the flying adults has passed. This presentation has shown how using insights from near-surface remote sensing operational satellites, cutting edge LIDAR, and modeling at the national scale all help inform our understanding of forest pests and can lead to more effective methods to minimize their negative impact. This video is a collaboration between NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's Hyperwall team, the PhenoCam team at Northern Arizona University, the NASA DEVELOP program, the University of Massachusetts Boston, and the USA National Phenology Network. The effort was coordinated by staff to the National Invasive Species Council. The goal of the council is to coordinate, sustain, and expand federal efforts on the prevention, eradication, and control of invasive species. As a member of the council, NASA provides unique and valuable information for these efforts.